And welcome back to Daytime at 9. If you or someone you love is battling an addiction, there is wonderful help out there available. Greg Hanley, Alex Rahichi, and Daniel Baldwin with Sober Recovery are back this morning, twice in this month. I mean, we're lucky campers over here. Oh, so it's good to see you all. Thanks for being here. We're excited to see you. I'm always excited to see you. Okay, so I want to do what we did um, a couple of months ago. We, we go over some trending topics and things that are happening in Hollywood. Um, and I just want to get your take on uh, these situations. So I wanted to start with Lamar Odom. So uh, recently he lost two of his friends in two weeks. And as we all know, Lamar is, is in recovery, right? He's a recovering, recovering addict. And he's looking to his ex-wife now, Chloe, for support. And so this kind of got us thinking, um, and I wanted to ask y'all, how important is it if you're in recovery and a tragedy like this happens, how important is it to really surround yourself with people who love you, that can give you that support and really keep you on the right track? Well, it's vital. Yeah. Um, you're going to feel a lot of things that you hadn't really felt before and, and you don't have a place to put them and it happens. I don't, I actually know of one of the guys that this happened to, he was a uh, local mm -hmm. person right. and you know people who go into recovery, they meet a lot of people and the, and the, the, <clears throat> the scary thing is that a lot of times people when they relapse they hadn't used anything for a while and their body and in tune for what they're getting ready to put in it, in it. and um, so they go back to doing something that at the level that they were mm -hmm. and um, and end up like this. Mm -hmm. For him to lose two friends like that in a week is I, I don't even know um, it brings back stuff in me mm -hmm. from you know I've lost a lot of people to this mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's your, my heart goes out to him a lot. Um, as far as triggers, I'm sure, I know we always talk about the fact that there are so many triggers out there um, when you're in recovery. Something like this, such a tragedy, how do you even prepare yourself for something like that? I mean, when, when you're going through the process, when you're, when you're at SOBA, is this something that you really, you work on, that you talk about, that you talk about triggers, you talk about how to handle <coughs> Tragedies? Well, I, I don't think you're ever prepared for you know right. the loss of a human life. Sure. You know, unless they're like the great grandmother or whatever, and you mm -hmm. know it's it's a matter of time. I think an important thing to remember here is that, and, and I'm not familiar with what Lamar's program mm -hmm. looks like, but anyone in general, if you're working a relatively active program, mm -hmm. you're far less susceptible when these big bombs hit. You know, so I mean, if you're involved in your recovery, if you're sponsoring people, if you're going to meetings still, and that does have a tendency to taper off as you get years of sobriety. But Greg will tell you, and Alex will tell you, many times we see people come in after the 10 year mark and something like this. But when you ask them how involved in their recovery they've been in the last four or five years, I, you know, I don't go to meetings that much anymore, and I don't really, uh, and, and that, this is what happens, you know. At the end of the day, you're always an addict. Yeah. You're never cured. And I, I hear um, <clears throat> parents or people sometimes that uh, have given up on somebody, and they go, we're, we're prepared for what's coming, and they're not. When, um, you know, in these two things, this isn't fixable. There's nobody that can change the effect on, and because Lamar is famous, it affects like America when yeah. this happens. So on the good side of it, at least it brings a conversation mm -hmm. and people are talking about it and people are yeah, listening. A lot, a lot and, of awareness. awareness is always yeah. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, another trending story I wanted to, to talk about, this is so incredibly sad, Victoria Siegel, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard about her, she, um, she is the 18 year old daughter of David and Jackie Siegel, they are on that documentary, Queen of Versailles, mm -hmm. so I was reading up on this and, and she passed recently, but uh, that apparently she had struggled with an addiction to prescription, prescription drugs. drugs prior to her death. And, and we have talked about this before, uh, how younger and younger teenagers and kids are getting addicted it, to prescription drugs. It's the same drugs. thing going on, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the Siegel family or somebody here in San Antonio or somebody anywhere across the U.S. That's, that's the trend. That's the things we're talking about is it starts with the prescription drugs that kids are, have really, really easily uh, have access to it. So whether, you know, it's the grandma or the mom that had a procedure, went to the dentist, they just go to the cabinet. It's really, really simple to get. 
and you're instantly <coughs> addicted to them. Yeah. And it's, you, they don't outgrow them, and you're seeing exactly what's happening right now. Well, happening. and it's the combination of, um, so you get medications that in certain do dosages, they're lethal, but they're also medications that as you use them longer, you need more. And then people, and especially benzodiazepines, which is Xanax, Ativan, Clonopin, they have a half-life that can last up to 18 days. So it stays in your system. <clears throat> yeah, and one of the side effects is you forget things, such as mm -hmm. how many I took today or oh, how many I took so yesterday. Scary. Or you get really used to just putting a pill in your mouth as a go-to thing when you're anxious and things, these things happen. But the really sad thing about this is that we're talking about, every time we're talking about trending topics, mm -hmm. we're talking about what famous person died of an overdose this Awful. month. And, and it is, um, and it shouldn't be a trending topic, mm -hmm. but, it, but it is always a topic. If we do this every month, it's kind of like, who's going to die next month? Yeah. And, and what famous person are, are we going to be talking about? You know, and, and, and that, um, that early detection, early prevention that we associate with so many diseases that we all say, oh gosh, you should go get a mammogram, you should go do. Right. The stigma associated with doing heroin is well known. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, my son wouldn't do heroin. Oh, of course not. But it right. starts with these prescri prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. These are drugs. Mm -hmm. So if you're taking it faster than it says, one every six hours as needed, and now you're taking two every three hours, then five. You're on drugs and yeah. you're using, there's, a, there's a, a use for these that's legal and, 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 and determined by the dosage and the amount of time, the frequency. But don't, don't misunderstand, it doesn't get to the heroin nowadays until you've abused these usually yeah. for a long time. It takes, mm -hmm. it's a process. For sure. Steps. All right, guys, well, stick around and we hope you'll stick around because up after the break, we're going to talk recovery and relationships. Should you keep dating if you're going through recovery or if you're married? How do you help a spouse that's going through this difficult time? We are answering those questions <coughs> after the break. <laughs> Welcome fun. back, everyone. We are back with Greg Hanley. Scotty Brown is now joining us. Hello. And Daniel Baldwin with Sober Recovery. They're, they really are a fun group of guys, I got to tell you, okay? But we're going to talk about uh, an article in Recovery Today, which is your magazine, Greg. Mm -hmm. He publishes too, by the way. There's nothing he doesn't do. But it's so interesting. It's, it talks about being in love and being in relationships when you're in recovery and the fact that you can't do both. He says, this, this gentleman here, John Bradshaw, he says, being in love is equivalent to being high all the time. Any therapist will tell you, you cannot do therapy with people who are in love. That is so interesting. We've never talked about going through recovery and dating. And if you can and if you should. And why are you smirking? I'm not smirking. Yes, you are. <laughs> well, I think, I think, I, I think uh, what the, the standard model is, you should probably not get involved in a serious relationship in the first year you're in recovery. A year. A year. So, but, but that's not to say that after you've been sober for a certain amount of years, and uh, plus those people who are already married and then got sober, the problem with those people is they get all cleaned up, they get sober, and then their spouse looks at them and goes, I don't want you anymore either anyway. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. That's no good, because then you're I thought I could blame it on the alcohol. I can't. Get out. Well, there's a big correlation work. also <laughs> of... If one person in a marriage goes into recovery and the other one doesn't go to another program, mm -hmm. such as the Al-Anon program or something like that, the odds of them staying together are very difficult. Mm -hmm. And Or at least the spouse gets some kind of help for what went on in the house. Because a lot of people who go into recovery, they, they come back and, and expect everything to be nice and fine because I'm not getting loaded anymore, right. and then they I come home, and me. somebody's still mad, and they, they're, you know, they're... Unresolved uh, issues. All kinds of stuff, so it can be real difficult. In the um, treatment, you see a lot of people that get together in treatment. They fall for each other in treatment, and... Is it because they're, they understand each other, Yeah, right? it's, they, you know, they've shared, and they have these relationships that kind of form that can get confusing, and then, and that's usually a bad idea. Um, it is. A That's strength. always a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, they have, uh, they have kind of like a, because um, when something goes south, then it's 
a possibility of one relapse and, and, and almost every time you end up with two people that are relapse. So I see people, they fall in love and then they want to go move in together and I go, that's <laughs> a really bad idea. Don't yeah. do well, it. Well, they're switching addictions too, you know, uh. from the drugs and alcohol uh -huh. to, you know, we need something. I did it. I had her move in immediately. <laughs> didn't for last real? very long. Yeah. Right, didn't what the hell? Didn't I need a out. new drug. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> these guys. But what's so interesting to me is it's you. You go through recovery, okay. Everybody wants companionship. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming everyone wants to be in love. But when you know, when do you know that it's okay to go there again? Well, when, when when you're getting sober, you're 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 getting in touch for the first time, probably in a long time, with who you are. You know, sense. and dealing with your own feelings and your own thoughts and, and, and reestablishing those connections. To plummet yourself into a relationship that requires usually a lot of time and attention when you really need to be working on yourself mm -hmm. is part of the equation that's really, really bad. So let's also be realistic about this. Um, that the <laughs> people that you're getting in recovery are 20 to 25 year old young people. Right. So now you take all the drugs, all the alcohol away from them and tell them, and don't date for a year and they're gonna listen to you. True. Uh, even if they're not in recovery, go home and tell your 20 year old kid, don't date for a year because you need to get better grades in college and right. see how that works out. They're going to and, and so it is. I know in, and we have recovery communities that uh, age groups of people, guys and girls stay in for a year and they're going to get together and they're going to date and they're going to do all the things wrong that, um, that young people are going to do. And we try to manage that and be aware of it and not have it be a hidden thing and a bad secret because they're going to do that. Right. And, um, and, then be, and then kind of try to guide, it through, guide them through rough spots. If you're new in recovery and you're starting to date and you get in a rough spot, then it becomes a whole different level of a rough spot. Gotcha. And right. my, um, my counselor said, get in a relationship. You'll be in so much pain. You'll have to work on yourself. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Whatever works. Whatever works. Okay. Uh, don't go anywhere. If you haven't submitted your questions for our experts yet, you can email us or send us a message on Facebook, and we will answer your questions after the break. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. And welcome back. Greg Hanley, Scotty Brown, and Daniel Baldwin with Soba Recovery are here. And by the way, you all look really good. Y'all been like on a on a health kick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we've been on a 22-day challenge. And, and what the results so far? How many pounds did you lose? I think you lost more than I did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you did. We well, all look good. Almost 30 yeah. pounds. He uses the bathroom pound. more than I do, too. Congratulations. <laughs> TMI. TMI. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, we have some viewer questions we want to get to. We probably <clears throat> have time for a couple of them. Uh, first up, this was uh, emailed to us. The question is, can depression be a sign of drug abuse or alcohol abuse? You know about that a lot. <laughs> I'm depressed and sobriety. <laughs> Don't feel bad that you know about it, Scotty. I wake up with it. Then I got to get into action. But yes, it can be definitely. You know, like a lot of people use drugs right. and alcohol because of depression, and it helps for a while, and then the prescribed amount doesn't work anymore. Right. You have to find something else. It just seems like it would be a vicious cycle. You well, know? here's the part is that alcohol, for instance, is a depressant. Right. <clears throat> so people treat depression with a depressant, so it makes them more depressed. And so you feel good for the moment, yeah. but then... Well, it's kind of, so the cycle is that I'm depressed, so I'm gonna drink or use drugs. Right. And then I'm depressed because I'm drinking and using and so drugs. Do it again. And so it just keeps going and going like mm -hmm. that. But yeah, for sure. Okay, uh, the next question ha actually has to do with the Soba Recovery Program. And this viewer wanted to know how similar or different is Soba from the 12-step program in AA that everyone hears about? Well, um, SOBA is treatment, and AA and 12 Steps are a fellowship. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of recovery centers, including SOBA, that fellowship, 12-step fellowship, is a part of it. And, and it is, irregardless, people have a lot of opinions on that, um, and it can be 
any of the A's. There's one for CA, for Cocaine Anonymous, there's Narcotics, um, Sex Anonymous, Overeaters, and pretty much what it um, allows is people to meet people who have similar problems and be able to discuss it openly. And it becomes a support group after treatment. But treatment is about therapy and groups and, um, you know, there's, so it's, it's a part of it for sure, but it's not treatment. Okay. Go ahead, Daniel. No, no. Okay. One more question. I know this one uh, is, is kind of basic, but I feel like it's important. Really quickly, we have about 30 seconds, but what are some signs that someone is abusing drugs or alcohol? What are the most obvious signs, if you could name them? Stealing your money. Okay. No, that makes sense. <laughs> Taking yes. things from your house. Yeah. Ch changes in behavior are very significant. When when someone, you know, Tommy's always on time for work. Tommy never does this. Tommy, when Tommy starts doing the nevers, there's something wrong. I'm not sure. Or who's up. that guy? Who's your new friend that right. looks kind of yeah. scary? <laughs> but the again, I always like to say your intuition is going to tell you if something's going on, and if you think something is going on. It's going on yeah, and do something. There. It's an emergency. <clears throat> All right, guys, thank you so much. And uh, after the break, we're going to be right back to tell you more about Sober Recovery Center and how they can help you or a loved one right here in San Antonio. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And we are back with Greg, Daniel, Alex, and Scotty with Sober Recovery. And gentlemen, we just have a little bit of time, but if someone is, is hurting right now, if they're battling uh, an addiction, if they if somebody has a loved one who's battling an addiction, what can they do today? It starts with a phone call. Um, it, it's that simple. Phone call, you're not obligated to anything. Um, just reach out and at worst case, you might just get some information on what to do when the timing is right. Okay. So it's okay just make to the call, call and talk. Yeah. And I know that you, you're always available, and, and any question people have, they yeah, can call you at any time. Have a conversation. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you all for being here. Thanks it's always good to see you. See you next month. See you next month, Carl. Right. See you then. <laughs> and you guys have a wonderful weekend. We will see you on Monday. <laughs>